Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Luke Ness Monster, and today we're going to be going over every single Star Wars The Black Series Jedi release and ranking them from worst to first. Now, there are a total of 70 Black Series Jedi in the line, and there's a lot, so we're going to be going through these pretty quickly. I won't be talking about each one too in-depth, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of figures here. Some of them are really good, and some of them are really dang bad. Now, of course, some of the releases do have, like, original versus photo reel, and I did kind of bunch all that in together into, like, one ranking spot. So, for example, a Farm Boy Luke only has one Farm Boy Luke release. Like, it doesn't account for the several different variants we got. Real quick though, before you get into the video, we're actually giving away this Black Series Arc Trooper 5s. It is looking incredible, sealed, pristine, and ready to ship once we hit 13,000 subscribers. Now you do have to be subbed to enter into the giveaway, so make sure you go down and hit the like button, subscribe so you don't miss out, and once we hit 13,000 subs, I will give away this Arc Trooper 5s. Anyway, on to the video. Anyway, jumping right into the number 70 spot, I had to give it to the carbonized Ahsoka from The Mandalorian. Or actually, it might be from the Ahsoka show. I don't even know at this point. This figure just really sucks. Um, I think this one is pretty self-explanatory and why it's not good. And so I won't go too in-depth with it, but this was also like a $66 two-pack. And so this was like a $35 Ahsoka, which is just crazy. So yeah, this one is pretty clearly the worst Ahsoka figure we've ever gotten. Coming in at the 69 spot is, again, another Ahsoka figure, but it is the credit collection Ahsoka. This one really has no screen presence, it's not based off anything, it's just a made up repaint for a quick cash grab and so and so because of that it does easily become one of the worst Black Series Jedis. And then at the 68 spot is along the exact same line, it is Hologram Ahsoka. Now this one I think you could argue is based off something because we do see holograms in the uh, in the actual movies and films, but did we see anything specifically of Ahsoka? I'm sure you can find some and look, I'm, I'm sure there's somewhere there. I do really like the hologram line, but I just think the figure selection should have been better and Ahsoka is not really one that I think is a great figure selection for the hologram line. Coming in at the number 67 spot, I gave it to The Last Jedi Rey. This one is quite interesting, I just think it's one of the worst Rays we've ever gotten. I'm not a big fan of the outfit, articulation's poor, there is really no photo reel in this one because it is pre-photo reel, so because of that it's just not a great figure. Exact same lines with the number 66 spot, but it is Lee Last Jedi, Master Luke Skywalker. Again, just not my favorite outfit for Luke, I'm not a huge fan of his character in The Last Jedi, and uh, no photo reel, poor articulation, really all that just stacks up against it. Then coming in at the number 64 and 65 spots, we have the deluxe versions of these release. If you didn't know, they had deluxe versions where they basically had these like cool environmental stands and they had die cast accessories. Both Luke and Ray got these and I think they're pretty dang cool. Now, uh, one of the cool things about it is that uh, they actually swapped out the hard plastic for soft goods on this figure and I think that turned out really well. Over time, they kind of started to fray and decay though. And in reality, there's still no photo reel. The real saver for this thing are the environmental bases. I think they are super cool and I still use them to this day, but it still does not save this from being one of the worst Jedi releases. Coming in at the number 63 spot, I gave it to the original Force Ghost Yoda. Now this one, it's, it's not great. It is essentially that old Yoda mold, so it is super, super big and oversized, and because of that, it's just not great. Also, the the weird, like, force ghost effect they had, it's like this metallic-y blue silver kind of color, and it just doesn't look great in my opinion. And then one spot right above it at the number 62 spot is just the standard release of Empire Strikes Back Yoda for the exact same reasons. It's just oversized. Um, we, we needed a much more accurate Yoda, which we did get later down the line, but this one is just not it, especially for the price. This was a $20 figure, so retail price for this thing, it just was not worth it for how small of a figure it was. Coming in at the number 61 spot, I gave it to the retro Kenner Cardback Ben Kenobi. This one is okay. I'm just not a huge fan of the outfit for this. Uh, it was the first ever Ben Kenobi to have photo reel, so I do like that, but it's just not my favorite choice of like retro cardback. I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of like the retro kind of stuff, so. And then along the same line at the number 60 spot, I gave it to the Ralph McQuarrie Ben Kenobi. This one is, I, I, I like it a lot better because I feel like it has um, a little bit more of something that is based off of. It is specifically based off the Ralph McQuarrie concept art, but uh, I just think that if they're gonna do a Ralph McQuarrie two pack, they should have done Vader and Luke, not Ben Kenobi. And so for that, it didn't really make sense for me. 
Coming in at the number 59 spot, it is Hoth Luke. This Luke actually did come in a two-pack originally with the Wampa, and it did get an archive re-release later down the line with that photo reel. But even with the photo reel, the mold still sucks and the face still sucks, and the photo reel somehow made it look worse. Uh, so yeah, with the poor articulation and the really crappy face, it's just not one of the best Lukes we've ever gotten. Number 58 is Farm Boy Luke. This one kind of suffers from the same problem of they just can't get the Mark Hamill face right. They decided to do a soft goods shirt for him and it just, it looks really big and baggy. It doesn't ever sit right. I think they need to redo this figure, give him a brand new Mark Hamill face, and of course give him a hard plastic shirt. I think that would really, really do leaps and bounds for this figure. Number 57, I gave it to the original Return of the Jedi Luke. This one, uh, really they use the mold for a long time, but it just comes down to that poor mold. Uh, it's not great, and the brand new updated 2024 or 23 version is so much better, and it really shows how poor this 2014 version really is. So it's 10 years old at this point, and it really does show. Number 56 spot is X-Wing Luke. This is one of the first ever Black Series figures released back in 2013, so 11 years old at this point. And again, it comes down to really poor articulation on an 11 plus year mold. I think X-Wing Luke's uh, like outfit is super iconic. And so I'm really hoping that they do a new version of X-Wing Luke here in the future. 55 spot, I gave it to Yavin Luke. This one is not too bad articulation wise. I think the mold is pretty solid. It does have pinned legs, which kind of suck, uh, but it just, didn't do anything for me. Like we really see him wear it for like the outfit two minutes at the end of A New Hope and we never really see it again. So uh, I do like the metal it comes with. It's just not my favorite outfit for Luke and it, it pegged warm so hard when it was on store shelves back in 2019. Coming to the number 54 spot is the deluxe version of the Yavin Luke in the uh, Skywalker Strikes comic set. This one is the exact same figure with no metal. It does come with a lightsaber and a bunch of other accessories, which I think is super cool. It comes with like the sacred Jedi texts and a little box to keep it in. Even comes with a training remote and a blast effect you can put on the lightsaber. So overall, I think the accessories are what really sell this figure. But I just think, again, it is that kind of yellow jacket version of Luke I'm not a huge fan of. Coming in at the number 53 spot is the original release of Force Ghost Ben Kenobi. This one has no photo reel, and of course it does have that like metallic-y blue paint that just doesn't look super good in my opinion. So definitely one of the worst Force Ghosts we've gotten. And plus it is on that original Ben Kenobi mold, which has definitely not aged well. It's quite old at this point. One spot above that, at the number 52 spot, is the new Force Ghost Ben Kenobi. This one is the exact same figure, a little bit updated paint apps, but really it has that photo reel update, which is the big kicker. So if you do want a version of Force Ghost Ben, the newer version is the way to go because it looks so much better with that photo reel, but it still does lack in all those other areas. And then at the 51 spot, exact same figure, but it's just the standard release of Ben Kenobi. Again, it's just a really dated mold at this point, and I'd love to see what they could do with a brand new mold, updated face, and better photo reel. Coming in at the number 50 spot is Revenge of the Sith Obi-Wan Kenobi. This one is at several different releases, but it is definitely dated at this point. Uh, the body is horrible, and for me, this, the thing is he has like a peanut-sized head. His head is way too small for his body, and even with the updated photo reel with the archive version, it still just does not look good. They should have made a brand new head for him, and I think he would have been a much better figure. But on that old mold with the tiny head and bad photo reel, he is definitely towards the bottom of my list. Coming in at the number 49 spot, I gave it to Bespin Luke. This is one that I really want to like because it's one of my favorite outfits for Luke Skywalker, but uh, the mold is really poor at this point. Again, it's probably a good 10-year-old mold, and uh, even worse, the Mark Hamill face on it is really bad. They need to do an updated Mark Hamill face. We've seen them do versions of Empire Strikes Back Mark Hamill before, and uh, it, it would just be such a huge improvement on this body. I want to see them do a brand new Bespin Luke head to toe. This one might be a little strange for people to see so low on the list, but, but I gave the number 48 spot to Ahsoka Tano from Star Wars Rebels. This one is just not my favorite outfit for Ahsoka. She did get a photo reel update back in 2020, which is nice, but it's just not my favorite outfit for Ahsoka, and the articulation is kind of poor. Sticking on that Rebels train, the 47 and 46 spot go to Ezra and Kanan, uh, both from that original Rebels line. I do really like these figures. I love the Kanan figure, but uh, again, they are older figures. Came out in about 2018, and so articulation's a little poor. Even with the photo reel update in 2020, they're not the best figures. 
Coming in at the number 45 spot is Clone Commander Obi-Wan Kenobi. This is another one that I really love the design for. I love the 2D Tardiskovsky Clone Wars, and so it's really cool to have this one in the line, but it is on that original Clone Trooper body, and so articulation is so bad. I'd love to see an updated version of this on the new 2023 clone body, but, you know, one can hope. Coming in at number 44 spot is Jana Solo. This is one that I just don't know that much about. I don't own the figure, and I don't have any attachment to the character from the comics at all, so I kind of put her a little bit lower on the list just because I don't really have any attachment to her. I think she's probably a pretty decent figure. The articulation's okay. She does have pin joints, but she looks all right. Coming in at the number 43 spot, I gave it to Revenge of the Sith Anakin. Now this one is a figure that I really, really love. But again, it is a 10 year old mold at this point. The archive re-release does look really dang good though. This is one that really would have benefited from the inclusion of like a uh, robe with the figure and it didn't unfortunately. This one still kind of holds up to today, but uh, you know, a brand new mold is desperately needed. Coming in at the number 42 spot is the Walmart exclusive Jabba's Palace Luke. This is one that I do really, really like. Uh, the Mark Hamill face though is pretty poor. They've done better. And the base body for this one is Return of the Jedi Luke originally, so poor articulation, okay face. Uh, it lands it somewhere in the middle of the list. And then coming in at the number 41 spot, right along the same lines, is Endor Luke. This one released 2020, and it is on that exact same original 2014 Luke body. And so articulation is really poor, but it does have the super cool Endor poncho and Endor helmet that really bring a lot of cool details out of this figure. And so because of those Endor stuff, it kind of bumped it up a lot on this list. Uh, so I really love the idea of it, but I would love to see it redone on that new Luke mold. In the number 40 spot, I give it to Island Journey Ray. This one is one of my favorite Ray outfits. Uh, the articulation is pretty solid. It's one of the first figures to actually have photo reel too. Overall, it's a pretty solid figure and it does come with a like cool cloak thing, which I think is great for the figure. 39 spot, I gave it to season seven of Clone Wars Ahsoka. This one I really liked when it first came out, but it's really started to date over time. Uh, the legs are really, really poor. It does use the Rebels Ahsoka legs. And so articulation on the legs are just poor and they're inaccurate. The legs that she has just look nothing like what the season seven of Clone Wars actually looked like, which makes it super inaccurate. And I think the face is definitely dated over time. I thought the photo reel looked really good when it first came out, but now compared to the updated Padawan Ahsoka, it just doesn't look as good. Coming in at the number 38 spot is Jedi Knight Revan. This one is quite interesting. I love the like uh, tan robes mixed with the uh, kind of purple color scheme of the lightsaber. Overall, I like this figure and like I said, it kind of lands right in the middle of the list for me. Number 37 is interesting, and it is comic Darth Vader, or the all-white Darth Vader. I just have zero attachment to this character, but it's on that Empire Strikes Back Darth Vader body, which is a really dang good Darth Vader body, and so I really had to put it somewhere in the middle of the list because of how good the body is, but, you know, the actual figure and relevance itself just means nothing to me. Coming in at the number 36 spot, I gave it to Bastila. This is another one that I just have very little connection to. I played through KOTOR and I just didn't do anything for me. I think the figure looks really dang good though. Photoro looks amazing, but she does use like the Aura Sing legs, which are pinned legs and they're not the best. Number 35 is Attack the Clones Anakin Skywalker. This is a figure that I really, really like. I think the photo reel looks amazing. And I think overall, for the most part, it has some decent articulation, but, but from the waist down, it is those original Revenge of the Sith legs. And so, you know, they could have really updated it, made some new legs for him, and they decided to reuse the old ones, which make it a little bit dated. Coming in at the number 34 spot is the Rise of Skywalker Rey. This one surprised me being so high on the list, but it's a really dang good figure. The photo reel is amazing. The articulation is amazing. It comes with a ton of accessories. This is a really dang good figure, but it's just the character of Rey that kind of is upsetting. If this was any other character, it would be in the top 10, but I'm just not a big fan of Rey and I'm not a big fan of that outfit either. So she kind of landed in the middle of the list just because the figure is a really dang good action figure. Coming in at the number 33 spot is Mara Jade. This one's a pretty recent release and overall it is really dang good. Only problem is she is on that Mara Jade body and so does have some limited articulation. Does have some updates though. Brand new photo reel face looks great. Brand new arms, great articulation, but the rest of the body suffers from that Jana Solo body. Coming in at the number 32 spot and then the 31 spot are the two uh, Fallen Order releases of Cal Kestis. Uh, first up being the Sander Redbox and then the, the Deluxe set. Both of these are really dang good. I love the likeness to Cal Kestis on these figures, but this figure did release in 2019 and they still have pinless joints. 
And at this point, the painless joints are feeling really dated. The articulation is not as good as it could be on these figures, which is a little bit of a shame, uh, but all of those extra accessories and the hard poncho on the deluxe version is really, really good. Coming in at the number 30 spot, I gave it to Force Ghost Qui-Gon. I do really like the Qui-Gon body. Overall, it's pretty good. Photo reel's great. And I think they knocked it out of the park with the Force Ghost effect on this one. I think it's one of the better Force Ghosts we've gotten in the line. Coming in at the number 29 spot is the new Force Ghost Yoda, and this is one that I absolutely love. It is the correct scale. They kind of dimmed down the uh, like metallic blue sparkle bits on this one too, and it looks a lot better. It is, it is such a huge upgrade compared to the original version. And then one spot above that at the number 28 spot is Forest Ghost Anakin. This one is on the Mace Windu body, which I think is a great Jedi body, and it does have amazing Hayden Christensen likeness. So this one overall is a really dang good figure, and I love how they did the Forest Ghost effect on him. Jumping into some of the really, really good Jedi at this point, coming in at the number 27 spot is Qui-Gon Jinn. Qui-Gon is such an amazing character. I absolutely love Qui-Gon, and his figure is no different. The original release did not have photo reel, but they did do an updated version which has photo reel, and that photo reel version is so good. The biggest problem is the original came with a force hand, and the updated did not. And so you either have an extra force hand, or you don't have photo reel. And it's kind of something I don't want to have to pick and choose for. If they included the hand in the updated version, it would have been so much higher on the list. Coming in at the number 26 spot, I gave it to Jedi Survivor Cal Kestis. I don't like the outfit for Cal as much on this figure than I do the Fallen Order version, but the articulation is such a huge update. Same with the actual photo reel. It looks a lot better than that original version. Coming in at the number 25 spot is the comic book Luke. Now this one I think is pretty good. It is on that Dagobah Luke body, which is an incredible Jedi body. If you don't have Dagobah Luke, go pick up Dagobah Luke. But this one is just a black version of that, and I think it looks pretty good. Coming in at the number 24 spot is Ezra from the Ahsoka show, and this one is really, really good. He has all of the updated modern articulation, pinless look, great photo reel to the actor. This is a really, really good figure. I know it's not perfect to what actually showed up in like seasons 3 and 4 of Rebels, but it is a nice realistic adaptation and I really like how it turned out. Coming in at the number 23 spot is Sabine from Ahsoka. Now you can argue she's not a Jedi, but she uses the Force in the actual Ahsoka show and she is technically Ahsoka's Padawan, so I put her on the list and uh, this is a really good figure. Sabine from the Ahsoka show is just so good. Incredible, updated modern articulation, really good accessories, with an amazing face with amazing likeness to the actress. This is one of the best Black Series figures we've gotten in a long time. Then coming in at the number 22 and 21 spot, I gave it to the Mandalorian and Ahsoka versions of Ahsoka, specifically the version without the cloak, and then the deluxe version with the cloak that came out later. Both of these figures are really, really good. I like the cloaked version a little bit better just because I love the look of Ahsoka with that cloak on. It really adds a lot to her character, but you know, modern articulation, looks great, pinless look, amazing photo reel. It really does have all the benefits of a modern Black Series figure. The next four spots, we have four different variants of Kenobi from the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. Coming into the number 20 spot is Jabim Obi-Wan. This is one of my favorite outfits from the show, but uh, the figure just wasn't executed the best. The cloak he had is not good. It does not sit well, and it's just, it's a little weird. I also don't like the legs that they chose. It's the same legs from the Wandering Jedi Obi-Wan, and I think the articulation for them are really good, but they're just not my favorite design as far as, like, pants and legs go. And then one above that is uh, Wandering Jedi Obi-Wan, along the same lines where I like the outfit. I think for me, though, uh, I'm just not a big fan of the big, like, U-neck that he has. It looks like somebody grabbed him by the collar and just, like, yanked his shirt and ruined his shirt. Like, I, I would have much preferred this just be a normal shirt, but instead they gave him like a really loose turtleneck and it just looks weird to me. But one above that at number 18 is the Tibbin Station Obi-Wan, and this one is on that exact same body, but he has a blue shirt, he has like a cloak, a backpack, and he has all the really, really good stuff about the Wandering Jedi Obi-Wan just done better. Because of the cloak that he has, it kind of covers up the U-neck, it looks really dang good, and that backpack over top of it looks amazing. And then coming into the number 17 spot as my favorite version of Obi-Wan from the Obi-Wan Kenobi show, it is Jedi Legend Obi-Wan. This outfit looks a lot like Revenge of the Sith, and that's probably why I like the outfit a lot, but it's by far the best. I'm not a big fan of the cloak, but you take off the cloak and uh, the Jedi robes just look really good. And of course, it has all of the benefits of modern articulation. 
Coming in at the number 16 spot is Ayla Secura. This one is such a good figure. Hasbro always knocks that out of the park with their alien figures, and this one is no exception. The face for Ayla is amazing. The biggest problem is that she just reuses Aura Singh's legs, and so she does have the pinned joints. Could have been better, could have modernized this with some better articulation, but it is what it is, and I think that the figure is still amazing even with those pinned legs. Coming into the number 15, 14, and 13 spot, we have the three different versions of Mace Windu. 15 being the original Jedi version of Mace Windu. I like this one, but I do like the Clone Wars version better from the Clones of the Republic 2-pack because I really love the look with those clone trooper gauntlets. But one above that is the 2D Tardiskovsky version because it has the full-out clone armor with like the robes underneath, and that is just by far my favorite look for Mace Windu. All the figures are on the same base body, so all these extra pieces are just a little bit different to make it look a little bit cooler and so that's why I think that the Clone Wars version is a little bit better. Coming into the number 12 spot I gave it to episode 1 Obi-Wan Kenobi. This Jedi body is really really good. Now unfortunately it does have pinned legs but besides that it just looks amazing. But the episode 1 Obi-Wan looks great. The photo reel is really good and it looks a lot like Ewan McGregor did in episode 1. One above that is episode 2 Obi-Wan, uh, exact same Jedi body, a little bit of different paint, uh, but he does have the Jedi mullet, which I really like. I don't know if you guys could tell, but I just like his hair in that one better than the episode 1 version, so... Coming in at number 10 spot, finally breaking the top 10, we have Plo Koon. This is an incredible figure. Hasbro always knocks it out of the park when it comes to alien figures, and this one is no exception. It is on that Mace Windu base body. All the detail and sculpting that went into Plo Koon just really knocked it out of the park. All the paint details, it just looks like a really amazing figure, and he does come with a Jedi cloak, which, you know, you can't really say for most Jedi. The number 9 spot, I gave it to Kit Fisto. Now this one doesn't come with a Jedi cloak, which is a real shame, uh, but I just think the mold and the sculpting for Kit Fisto came out a little bit better. I really like Kit Fisto's character, and overall I think the figure just turned out a little bit more clean. Coming in at the number 8 spot, I gave it to Mando Luke. This body is incredible. It is the body that was supposed to come out on the Rancor, but ended up coming out as a Mandalorian version instead, and it looks really, really good. The articulation's amazing, sculpting's incredible. Uh, biggest problem is the face and the hair. It's not perfect. They've done better Luke versions in the line before, but it gets the job done, and it looks really good. And then one above that at the number 7 spot is Return of the Jedi Luke. Exact same body as Mando Luke, but different hair, and I think the hair does a world of difference. I think the Return of Jedi hair makes it look a lot better, a lot cleaner. And of course it doesn't have like the vest as well and I think the, the vestless look just looks better for this version of Luke. Now before we get into the number six spot, I actually forgot to put the like uh, Baby Yoda training Luke in here from the Book of Boba Fett. He would be somewhere in this top ten because of that new body. It's a pretty good articulation, great accessories, but like the, the weird dojo look throws me off a little bit, but he would still be in that top 10 somewhere. Coming in at the number 6 spot, I give it to Clone Wars Anakin. This thing from the waist up is incredible. The Hayden Christensen likeness is awesome. The clone armor is really good. The, the problem is those legs are the Return of Jedi legs, and so they're really old, really dated. At this point, they're 10 years old, and they need an update. Coming in at the number 5 spot, I give it to Dagobah Luke. This one is such an underrated figure. You can still get him for really cheap. Uh, I absolutely love Dagobah Luke. If you don't have Dagobah Luke, go buy him. The articulation is incredible. The likeness to Mark is the best we've ever seen in the line, and overall it's just the best version of Luke we have right now. It's really good. Slightly better though is Snowspeeder Luke. I absolutely love the look of the big poofy orange jacket. Uh, I do think the Mark Hamill likeness is a little bit better in this version, but he does have like the cowl thing for the Snowspeeder helmet to keep him warm, and so it covers up his hair, which I think is a little frustrating. I wish you could see his hair in this, but overall I think the articulation and the posing you're able to get this figure into is what really really sells it for me. And then coming in at the number 3 spot is a little bit of cheating because it is that same Dagobah Luke, but it is the deluxe version that comes with Yoda. This set is one of the best sets we've ever gotten in the Black Series. It does have the little backpack that uh, training Luke can have Yoda in the back of. It also comes with extra force hands, so you have a like force hand as well as a handstand hand, so you can actually have him handstanding holding Yoda up with the force. It's like super cool. If you don't own this set, go buy this set. The set is awesome. Coming in at the number two spot, I gave it to Clone Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi. This is such a good figure. This one doesn't suffer from what Anakin suffers from because it has all brand new modern articulation. It does use clone trooper legs, so it has updated pinless legs, which I think is really nice. And overall, I just think his clone trooper armor looks a lot cleaner than Anakin's. And then coming in at the number one spot, and what I personally think is the best Jedi we have in the line right now, 
that is Padawan Ahsoka Tano from the Clone Wars line. This figure is so, so good. The articulation is the best we've ever gotten on a Jedi figure. The likeness to Ahsoka is incredible. They, f they managed to make it realistic and animated at the same time, and I don't know how they did it, but I absolutely love how this figure turned out. I think the accessories are great, and overall, it's just one of the best Jedi we've ever gotten in the line. But there we go. That was all 70 Black Series Jedi ranked worst to first. Let me know what you guys think of my ranking down in the comments. How would you change it up? And who do you guys think the best Black Series Jedi is? Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the like button, subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next video.